Welcome back to Carolyn and Capone's RV Life. I have my friend Bob with me for the last day before we uh, go in opposite directions. So I am taking advantage of his camera skills today since he did such a great job on the, I'll call it the curtain video, <laughs> winterizing the RV. So I'm gonna do a tour of my RV today. I know many of you have been asking for it. So I've got a, a wonderful cameraman here for one more day before I head off down to Slab City. And so why don't you come on in and I'll show you my home. So welcome to my little home. It's nice to have you all with me. I know a lot of you've been dying to see um, inside and I've been traveling a lot and I haven't really had time to just be in one place and clean up and get things out the way they are when I live in it. When you travel in an RV, you're cramming stuff in cupboards and you're cramming stuff in storage and you just have stuff everywhere. I literally probably swept, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the amount of dust because I've been driving on dusty roads. So so I'm happy to have my home in order that I can show you now. And it also gives me a great opportunity. Part of the reason I do these videos is to show you the reality of RV life. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to tell you it's wonderful all the time. You know, you're going to have challenges out here. And the one thing I want to make you aware of is if you're a germaphobe or you're afraid of dirt, <laughs> this is not the life for you. When you're boondocking, you're in national forests, you're driving on dusty roads, and dirt is just a fact of life. My home is in order today, and all ready to be shown off. Matilda is a 1993 Jamboree Rally on a Ford chassis, 29-foot Class C RV. So... Part of the reason I chose a Class C is for the kitchen. I like to cook, I like healthy foods, I don't do fast food, I don't do packaged food, I do natural whole foods. I also happen to be vegan. Eating out, especially in some of the small towns that I travel in, is pretty much just not even an option. So I wanted to have a full kitchen, which I get with this Class C, and I love it. I cook constantly. I have a full stove, I have an oven, which I'm not gonna show you. I didn't clean in there, <laughs> but I do have an oven. I have a microwave, which I very rarely use. I have a full-size refrigerator. So I'm gonna open up and I, almost a full, okay, this is not a full-size refrigerator compared to my, what I had in my house, but it's a pretty good size, as you can see. So I can keep a good stock of groceries in here. It's really, um, something that was important to me as well as a freezer. So a pretty good size freezer as well. I can literally boondock probably for a couple of months with a, you know, with a refrigerator and a freezer this size. Um, so this is my little kitchen and the faucet I replaced. I did this myself uh, the first couple months, the old one broke off. And so I replaced it and put this nice newer one on it, which I really like. I have had this big cutting board forever, which I'm really glad I brought with me because it actually happens to fit in here perfectly and I can slide it back and forth. So it gives me more counter space. So when I'm cooking, this is my cutting board and my counter space, which is really, really helpful. So um, I know they make fancy covers for sinks that you can get extra um, extra counter space and they probably even make cutting boards that do it but the one I had just happened to work so not to mention I just painted so uh, you'll see in the back and maybe I'll try to put some before and after photos into the video uh, I painted all my cabinets white I painted spray painted all the hardware took all the hardware apart and painted it painted the walls blue and when we go into the back you'll see what it looked like before so I really just wanted to make this as homey as I could and try to kind of not make it look like an RV. I mean, it's still an RV, but I wanted to make it homey. So I have been doing some remodeling. Uh, one of the things I did here with the refrigerator, these panels on this refrigerator come out. Uh, I broke this one because I'm not patient and it, I couldn't get it off, but, but there's a lip here and these panels come out. Oh, look at that. And they're just wood and they were the, this whole inside was that lovely fake wood and I didn't want that ugly fake wood. It looked very 1993. So what, the first thing I tried to do is paint it with magnetic paint because I wanted to put all my, my magnets on my refrigerator. When I travel to different countries, the only 
the only souvenirs I really get are magnets. So I have my, my magnets um, on my refrigerator in my old life, just to remind me of all the places that I've traveled to. So I wanted to do that here, but the magnetic paint, oh my gosh, what a mess, and it really didn't work. I put probably four coats on and it still didn't work. So um, instead of that, I just took them out and I spray painted it. So I spray painted the panels the same color as my hardware on my cabinets. And now I just Velcroed my magnets on. Go into the main living area. <laughs> this is where I work mostly. <laughs> That's pretty much all I do these days is work. And I took out the table. As you will see, most RVs come with a table. And I left the table in for a little while, but it was really uncomfortable to work on. It was hurting my hand and it just wasn't comfortable. I wanted a nice seating area. And I actually sometimes bring in an ice chest that I have and I just put this here with a pillow and I have a couch, which is really nice. Um, the cushions, of course, were the ugly 90s blue that came with it. Before I left the Bay Area, I went to an upholstery shop to see how much it would cost to get them reupholstered. They wanted 800 bucks to do that chair and four cushions not worth it to me. So I've been buying blankets and just covering them with blankets. That's why in the how not to freeze in your RV, I have a million blankets because I kept changing my mind too about what color I wanted to paint my walls. So I'd buy red blankets and I'd be like, no, I don't want red in here. And then I'd buy brown. No. Anyway, now I have blue walls and I just bought these blankets and, uh, and it works really well. I can just take them off. I can wash them and it's really comfortable and I don't have the ugly original cushions. One of the other big modifications that I did in here is I took out, come on, come here. Hi, Neil, everybody wants to see you. Oh, look, how's, how's that? <laughs> took out a chair and uh, so it left a nice big hole in the floor <laughs> and maybe someday I'll get around to filling that hole but right now it Capone's dish goes there so it's totally fine but yeah I had you see this chair here I had another one just like it here and I didn't need all that seating space I actually needed the storage instead work really really well unless I drive like a total lunatic which sometimes I can do um, they pretty much stay in place I hit if I if I have to make a tight turn or something Something, sometimes they will go go crashing but for the most part they stay there when I drive and you it's just like having a bunch of junk drawers which I should probably clean out I probably don't need that's my living area I work here I bought this uh, this TV tray which is a really nice thing I can move it around if I'm if I'm sitting over the, uh, in the other chair or whatever it's really nice that I can just move around you know there's it's such tight quarters in here it can be really hard to uh, to maneuver in here sometimes or to have enough room. So it's nice to have something that I can just move around it with me if I need it to. Up here, of course, I have my storage. A uh, couple of things that I couldn't part with <laughs> when I sold everything. Um, some of the fundraisers I went to always had local art from local artists and I have a couple pieces I couldn't get rid of and this is one of them. This is one of my favorites. I love this. So I held on to that but up here um, is my storage. As you can see, my backpacking gear is up here. Uh, my fancy cowboy hats. I've been collecting cowboy hats since I became a nomad hobo, I guess. <laughs> uh, my electronics are all here. Kind of like all my office stuff is up here. Uh, the other thing that's that's up here are, of course, the cushions that came with it, the because this is a bed, and the table, because I don't want to get rid of those because if I ever sell Matilda, I'm going to need to keep that stuff. So I've been holding on to that and that's stored up here too. So that's pretty good storage. And I bought these curtains. I replaced the, the short ones that come with the, all the RVs. I can attach the curtains, those little clips. I got them on Amazon. Actually, I can put a link uh, in my description to them. If you're interested in checking them out, I'll put a, I'll put a, an, I'll put an Amazon link. And these are thermal curtains. So I really like having these in here because number one, they kind of look nice. It just kind of gives it a homey feeling having, having these curtains. And at night, I can just close it up. Uh, just another thing I did in here. This is all a work in progress, uh, but this is what I've done so far and it's pretty cozy. So uh, welcome to the, the bedroom part of the RV and Capone's bed. <laughs> this is Capone's bed. Um, and I'm, if I'm lucky, I get a 
two square inches all the way up in that corner to sleep. He's a, not a very big dog, but man, he takes up a lot of space in the bed. I'm not quite sure how he does that. Another reason I chose this RV is because I'm still working and I work a lot and I am living in here and working in here, I thought before I bought it that I would want a separate living work bedroom space. Uh, I realize now I would rather have a smaller RV that can go more remote. So um, my next version of an RV is actually probably not going to have a separate bedroom. I really don't need it. It is nice to have. Hello. All right, you happy? Seven, eight years ago, however long it's been now, I owned a house. So I went from a house to an apartment to a smaller apartment to an RV. <laughs> so uh, I still had stuff. And so one of the things that, uh, again, in buying a 29 foot RV as opposed to something smaller is I thought I was gonna need a ton of storage. And one of the things that kind of sold me about this one is the under bed storage. <laughs> Capone loves this ride. Ooh, not so much. Oh my god. <laughs> so look at all that storage I have underneath. Uh, that's really, really a lot of storage. And you know what? 90% of the stuff that's in there I haven't touched in eight months. So uh, it was nice to have, but I don't really need it. Although underneath the clothes are all my photos and yearbooks and stuff like that, which I'm still trying to decide if I want to keep lugging around with me. But it is nice to have all that storage for those of you who are leaving houses and you want it. Really great feature of this RV is having, having all of that. And I also have closets, which, I'm not going to show you. <laughs> cabinets, and then you've got drawers on each side of the bed as well, and even another cabinet. So there's tons of storage in this RV. If you need storage, if that's a concern, no shortage. That's just the storage on the inside. I also have uh, the length of the RV on the back on the outside. I have storage as well. Do a different walk around of the outside of the RV another time in a different video uh, when I talk about how to drive a bigger <laughs> RV and I'll show you all the pieces I have held together with duct tape. Uh, I also have a furnace, which is really, really nice when it works. <laughs> if you saw the video about how to not freeze in the snow, uh, you'll know that my furnace isn't working right now. But it's when it did work, oh my gosh, it was awesome and it's really nice to have. If you're gonna be a boondocker though, just be aware that the, the fan, the blower, takes a lot of battery power. So I actually don't mind not having a furnace and using my heater buddy instead because just a night of that going on and off really would take a toll on my battery as a boondocker. But it is nice to have a furnace. For those of you who are gonna be doing campgrounds and RV parks and plugging in, it's really nice and it keeps it very comfortable in here. A uh, cozy little bathroom. It's very functional. It's not pretty. <laughs> and actually the previous owners tore out all the lovely pink carpet, which is underneath and it's disgusting. Uh, pull out all the pink carpet and I have, have um, laminate floors throughout the RV except in the bathroom and I tried pulling this pink carpet up but I think it pulled up the floor so it didn't seem like anything I wanted to keep doing once I started so this is also just on my to-do list another project right now I just put other carpets over it so I don't have to look at it uh, but it's just a very functional bathroom I've got some nice storage space in here the cabinets below and the cabinets above Also plenty of room here for towels, washcloths, and things like that. So this is also uh, something I like having. It's very handy. My shower, also known as a closet. <laughs> so I do use it for storage when I'm not showering. It looks like a lot, but it literally only takes me five minutes to take this stuff out and take a shower. Uh, but now you can see why in shower interrupted video, uh, when all this stuff is scattered about my bed and everything, why I couldn't find anything to put on <laughs> because everything was just scattered everywhere. Um, but I do have the, the hook here. Um, over the door. This is the only door actually that I can put a hook over and hang my jacket.
And in the front seat here is Capone's bed slash seat. So when we're driving, that's where he hangs out. I think you may have seen him in a couple videos, but that's where he hangs out when we're driving. Um, and I keep the bed up there, although he doesn't use it. Sometimes I'll turn the seats around uh, to face here, but honestly, they're kind of hard to do and it's kind of messy. So I usually just leave it like this. One thing, uh, one thing I do also really like about this RV is look at all the storage and cupboard space I have. Uh, it really is a lot. And like I said, uh, I do the whole food thing. So I've got my mason jars of my beans and my, a lot of them are empty. I might need to go shopping. And of course, Capone treats. <laughs> you always have to have plenty of Capone treats on hand. Just keep everything in mason jars up here. You do have to be careful when you're driving, especially on bumpy roads. Be careful when you're opening the cabinets. Uh, stuff does fall out. I have been hit in the head. Uh, but yeah, look at that. Plenty of room, <laughs> more foam treats. Yeah, lots of cupboard space. More cupboard space for food. I have a ton of cupboard space. I, I, I really could downsize. <laughs> the more space you have, the more junk you buy and the more junk you uh, carry around with you. Part of living this lifestyle is because I wanted to be more minimalist. I wanted less stuff to weigh me down. It's a 29 foot RV, but the living space is actually 21 by eight. So I live in 160 square feet. So um, I think that's pretty minimalist by most standards, especially where I come from. And you have uh, the 5,000 square foot McMansions. <laughs> this is pretty minimalist, uh, but I do have plenty of space. Some of my books, that was one of the hardest things for me to get rid of um, besides my art was my books. And I have been carrying a lot of these books around with me for a long time saying someday I'll read them. And I was hoping my RV life would be that someday, but so far, not yet. <laughs> one other thing I really like having, and it's kind of silly. There's, everybody has one. Um, so I love my fruit basket that I brought from home. I'm really glad I brought it. It's got a hook and I just hook it over the cupboard here and I'm actually really, I really need to go shopping. It's usually full of fruit, but there's nothing in it. Uh, and it's also just great for storage. Uh, sometimes I just put my cords in there like that. It's just really, really handy to have this right here. My clothespins, uh, store get stored here that's what I close packages with and I recently just discovered this how many of you are wearing readers now and how many of you have 14,000 pair and can never find one that's me actually I either have 10 pairs or I have none so I've started just sticking them in here you know, I just stick them in here and I always have them there and it's just been brilliant so far so I'm really happy with that this is my seating area it is really comfortable I work here um, and just hang out here. Underneath these benches aren't storage. Underneath this one is my fresh water, and so it is inside. Uh, and it's a, I think it was a 30 gallon tank I looked at. So fresh water is underneath here. So underneath this other one, I have the water pump, the water heater, and the controller. Uh, so there's a, a lot going on underneath these benches here. That's the tour of Matilda, and I hope you enjoyed visiting the inside of my home. It's been a pleasure showing it to you. And as always, I'm so grateful for all of you who are watching and sending me your comments, those of you who are out there living this life and those of you who aspire to be out there living this life. I love you all. You have just been so incredibly supportive and encouraging. I am just very, very grateful to you. So thanks for coming into my home today and I look forward to seeing you next time.